Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video, another collaboration. I'm joined by Filippo. It's an absolute pleasure. You guys will remember him, um, Tactical Manager. I remember when he came on for the Palmeiras game and he gave us just brilliant insight. And we actually basically predicted everything that was going to happen here with that preview for that for that show because like just the whole approach the players to watch out for the way power mirrors were going to address the game the difficulty of the game everything was just spot on and you guys absolutely loved it so we've got him back on again to discuss um this new chelsea player that will be coming in um selino and we have no idea about him there's no point trying to pretend there's not a single chelsea fan out there unless you are maybe an american mls follower chelsea fan that knows who this guy is so it's very important that we get the insight Filippo, welcome back man how are you doing I'm doing great. Uh, the only thing I want to point out there is uh, the only outcome I didn't want was I was hoping Palmeiras would beat Chelsea. We got close. <laughs> we got so Very. close. Um, we battled it out against a far better team. I was proud of the team, but I was hoping we would finally win the Club World Cup, but Chelsea wanted it as well. Mm. But yeah, I'm doing great and excited to talk about Gabriel Slonina, or as we call him here sometimes, Gaga Slonina. Gaga. Interesting. Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, have to, I mean, this this is such a... It's, it's kind of come out of nowhere, right? Because but I didn't see the build-up for Chelsea being linked with this goalkeeper. It was reported um, by my good friend Simon that Nathan Baxter would be potentially the Kepa replacement for second choice. So I don't think this, this goalkeeper comes in as second choice. Apparently, he could go back to a two-year loan in the MLS um, before joining up with Chelsea officially or properly um, in, the, in the future. I remember when we signed um, Courtois from Genk at a very young age and he obviously became something. So this is kind of like maybe a low risk, high reward situation where the goalkeeper could become something. He stands at six foot four. You've obviously seen him in the MLS. I've seen all we've, all we've been able to do as Chelsea fans is, is see maybe some comps and, and look at some, you know, some match ratings and and it seems like he started off with really good form as, as, as his time and then he had a massive dip i've never seen ratings like that so i'm assuming it weren't great performances maybe some individual errors some mistakes um but what what's your opinion of the goalkeeper is he is he is he a talent you know to, to look forward for the future what, what have you seen of him yeah the first thing we've got to put is put context in the position right he's only he just turned 18 in may so he's literally wow. fresh off 18 and you don't really see goalkeepers at this age starting professionally, right? Goalkeepers take much longer to mature than field players. You'll see a forward at age 18 emerge, maybe win a World Cup, right? Mbappe was, what, 19 when he won it or something like that and was playing a key role. But goalkeepers take longer to mature. Mm. So that's the first thing to add context here. So anything I'm criticizing Gaga Sonina is judging his current ability. Mm. But he's 18. Right. Yeah. Not every goalkeeper is Don Daruma that just goes on age 18 and starts. And and that's not him. He's definitely not ready. He's not ready to be a Chelsea backup. There's no way Chelsea can do that. If um Mendy gets injured and you need to play Gabriel Sonina on a Champions League knockout round, I would be very worried if I'm a Chelsea fan, right? There's a lot of aspects of his game that currently lack. Mm. If you look at Chicago Fire, I was when you contacted me yesterday, because I don't watch all their games, I'm not a fire fan. But I've watched a few to check out Gaga Sonina and I also watched a few because Shakiri is playing there now. And I was just like, hey, well, let me check it out, see what, what's up with him. Mm. And the games I watched, it didn't seem like they were trying to play out of the back at all. So that could affect his development in that sense. Right. Mm. And then I asked a friend of mine that watches all their games why. And he said one of the reasons was one of their defenders is a ball playing defender. The rest of the defense, including Gabriel Sonina, were really struggling with the ball on their feet. Yeah. So he was shrugging the ball on his feet. And also last year, I noticed that when he was playing for the United States U-20s, we faced Brazil, Colombia, and Mexico. I think he started against Brazil only, right? Because they were rotating. He is our best U-20 goalkeeper. So yeah. but we were rotating. And he did struggle a bit with his feet. Um, I think command in the box, too, is a little iffy at times, um, positioning. The one thing you can see right away from him is he's a very talented shot stopper. Yeah. Right. He'll make mistakes here and there as he's 18 and we would expect that. But when it comes to some very difficult saves and agility reflexes, you can see that there's a lot of talent there. And and in regards to Chelsea, we've heard rumors of Chelsea being interested last year here in the U.S. We were hearing that. Okay. And then then the sanctions came in for Chelsea and all of that. And then everyone just like it's not happening because Chelsea has other problems to deal with. And then Real Madrid was interested and Bayern was actually interested as well on him. Again, I think it has more to do with the risk-reward 
Yeah. 10 million is nothing for these clubs. And if he becomes a top goalkeeper, they're saving money because, I mean, Chelsea has no issue on spending 50, 60, 70 million on a world class goalkeeper. Yeah. Or, or Kepa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I'll let you see if you have any other questions with him. Mm. I do have some things in regards to the national team that I can address if you want about him too. Mm. I, it's interesting because obviously now that we've got a better check within Chelsea, in terms of scouting goalkeepers, I do have a bit of confidence now that we do know mm-hmm. what we're looking for in terms of just foundations. Like Ke- Kepa really, he didn't even really have the foundations to become a top Premier League goalkeeper just with his sheer limits in terms of his size, do you know what I'm saying? And, and coming, collecting crosses and, and his height to be able to reach the, 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 the top f- parts of the goal. He's kind of already at a disadvantage. Whereas this guy stands at six foot four. You said there was a few command in the box issues, which you would expect. What's his like frame like? He's obviously six foot four, so he's quite tall. Is he, is he quite bit, well, well built for his age? Would you say that he's got oh, the confidence? Age, yeah. Yeah. He, age, yeah. He's definitely got the confidence to maybe come out. Does he, does he always want to command his area? Does he at least have the confidence to always try and do that? And then there's some errors or... Or is he a little bit hesitant to come out, would you say? So he doesn't have confidence issues. That's quite clear. The problem is, again, as an 18-year-old, the goalkeeper is is a crap position, right? It, all it <laughs> takes is one mistake and you get a goal. You're a forward. You can miss 10 opportunities, score that one goal you win. You see hesitancy at times. You do see sometimes maybe um, as a young guy, he wants to do sometimes maybe too much. Sometimes you don't have to go for that ball. Uh it's it's nothing major, no major issues. What I'm trying to say is that some people here would also even compare him to Dandaruma, which he looked like a goalkeeper ready to start at age 18. Yeah, he was the goalkeeper that age 18 would start for many top five league teams, including AC Milan, and he was reliable and fair. Now, of course, he's far from perfect too, but he mm-hmm. was ready. Gaga Sonina is not that. As I, I talked to you even about. Um, I don't. I, I even think Chicago Fire could get better options, mm. but they're betting on maybe selling the prospect or want to develop the player, right? That's not Chelsea. Mm. Chelsea's not going to put a goalkeeper that's not ready to develop him, right? Of course, um, you can't do that. You guys are trying to get trophies. So the the one thing to say about Gabriel Sonina in terms of that is, you see the talent on the shot stopping. Mm. With his feet, he's definitely not good yet, but he's 18, so you can develop the next three to four years, and then by age 22, mm. could become better. Now, most of his the, the the things he needs to develop, I think a, a good part of it will just improve experience. Yeah, I think that's literally all he needs, and to keep his confidence up. Right. First of all, you're you can't expect every goalkeeper to be like Ederson in terms mm. of his feet. Right. That's, yeah. You don't need that. that. That's a little bit too much. You don't need him to be like that. Yeah. And sometimes the goalkeeper just getting more experienced, more confident on the ball. He'll make the right decisions, the right passes, and it'll just get better, get formed. A lot of it comes down to that experience. So I think it is a good bet for Chelsea to do mm-hmm. so. But he might be a player that you might not see play for Chelsea if he ever plays for Chelsea. Chelsea could exactly. very well sign him and he might never play for Chelsea. Yeah. You could very well see him play just after 2026. Right, mm-hmm. like near the 2030 World Cup, yeah, which by yeah. then he'll be 25, 26, which it's not too crazy for a goalkeeper to start breaking out after that age, and especially like looking at an American perspective, too. Tim Howard was a backup for Manchester United for years, mm-hmm. not many, I think three seasons, four seasons or so. And he, it wasn't until he got to Everton that he became a very good, if not elite, Premier League goalkeeper, it was fantastic. Yeah. So it might be a player that Chelsea might sign. He might only play at 2030. Who knows? Mm, it's true. Yeah. Uh, what would you What would you also say? Would you say is maybe best for it? Because we I've seen that he probably will go back out on loan. I don't know if it's back to Chicago Fire, back out on loan, or is he going to go elsewhere? What What would you say is is best for his development in terms of? Do you think this is a player? I, I guess behind the scenes, is he ready to make that move to Europe and go out on loan in, in a European team, or would you say that it's better for him at that young age to stay in America? Um, closer to, you know, maybe family. friends or family, yeah, and that that kind of side with it. So he seems very mature for his age. I think that's something to say right away. So I don't think he would have issues um, adapting. He also comes from a Polish background, and he seems to have a very strong Polish culture with him, which I'll talk about how the Polish national team tried to take him. Um, All right. Think, yeah, that, they actually called him up. Mm. Um, I'll get to that soon, yeah. that That's mm. a positive, right, if the, they were looking into him. But so I think in terms of culture in Europe, he might not struggle too much to that. I'm not saying Poland and England have the same culture, which they, I I don't know, but they probably don't. Uh, 
but I don't think he'll be that much of a struggle. He speaks English too, so that won't be an issue. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my main concern is this. So let's say they loan him back to Chicago, and like we talked about, his form as of late has been terrible, right? Along mm. with the Chicago Fire in general. Are the Fire starting him because he is the best they can get, or are they starting him because they see they can sell him for ten million or so, which is a pretty good profit? You yeah. loan him back. And then all of a sudden they sign a goalkeeper that they were trying to win more experience. Right. And mm. he's on the bench of the fire. Is that good for him? No, if he's on the bench in the fire, go play in the U 23s of Chelsea. Yeah. Now, if he's going to get loaned back to the Chicago fire and he's going to be a starter in MLS, maybe for one or two more years, then go abroad when he's 20. I think that would be good. Yeah. He's going to yeah. learn from every single mistake. I know MLS is not seen as a strong league abroad, but it's also a grown man league and there are professional players here and there's good quality players too. Mm. Um, I, I would see that as a benefit. He can stay two years as long as he's a starter. And, and like I said, right now, I don't think, I don't think, no, I'm 100% cer certain he wouldn't start for any Premier League team, mm. right? And I don't think he would start for any championship team right yeah. now. So, yeah. Yeah, stay in MLS another two years Then when he's 20, 21, then probably if, if Chelsea can, loan him out to maybe a championship team um, or, or maybe Premier League team, depending on how the, his development goes, right? But right now, probably would be best to, to, to stay here another year or two. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think this is, this is one of those that are going to be like a, a slow burner. And it's interesting in terms of you've got a lot of players coming up through in America. How would you say, is he, is he someone that people have their eyes on in America where they're like, okay, he could be the next thing for us in terms of the national team with the senior team. Is he doing that well with the under twenties? As you said, he's, he's a starter with the under twenties at times where he came off the, or he started in the game against Brazil. Is mm -hmm. he like, is he, is he known in America as, as one of the leading talents to come through or, or up and coming? Is there a reason why you can say outside of just, gambling on small money and and then hopefully making the player in a, in a much higher resale value or or he becomes something if he becomes something can you see why why there's initial interest from real madrid and chelsea in these even in these early stages yeah he's our highest rated u20 goalkeeper right he's not he's not with the senior team right now right mm -hmm. he's not the senior team right now is zach stefan it, it's kind of funny because our senior squad is pretty much the backup premier league players it's zach stefan the backup in Manchester City, Matt yeah. Turner, that just signed for Arsenal. He's going to be the backup of Ram, uh, Aaron Ramsdale. Yeah, and and um, Ethan Horvath, that's the backup of Nottingham Forest. <laughs> so, Jesus so, Christ! So, Not much game time for your goalkeepers, is it? <laughs> no, no. We're hoping some of them. We're hoping Zach Stefan gets a loan and Ethan Horvath, or maybe Bryce Samba will leave Nottingham Forest and Ethan Horvath will play in the Premier League. But that, that's so you can see a little bit of the level Gaga Sonina is now, right? He's not ahead of these guys. Yeah. yeah. And they are backup goalkeepers in the Premier League. Sure, maybe Zach Steffen could start for a lower Premier League table team. Sure, but mm -hmm. Gaga Sonina is below that right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, man. It's uh, Where has he seen the highest rated U20 goalkeeper? How will it be mm -hmm. later on? No one knows. He's not playing with our U20s right now. Uh, because he's grown above the U20 level, right? He's mm -hmm. starting for a team, so the MLS club, um, Chicago Fire, won't release him. But yes, he would be our starting U20 goalkeeper, no questions asked. Mm -hmm. And he's been called into camp for the, the senior squad for the United States, I think more because of Poland's interest. Because yeah. the they want to get that cap. Yeah, well, he committed now. He committed to the United States after yeah. that. So what happened was the Poland coach visited him in Chicago, went to a game, gave him a jersey, and said he wanted him in this um, international break that we just had for Poland. And when the Polish roster came out, Gabriel Sonina's name was there. Mm. He was called in. So I guess what happened was he was called in, and they were just waiting for him to give an answer. And, and he rejected the call. He didn't go. And he said he wants to play for the United States. So, so again, um, I think... We are all able to see a player. We've watched the sport long enough that we can see. I can see some talent there, but I do like to go towards what professionals are seeing with this kid, right? Mm -hmm. And we saw clubs interested, Real Madrid, Bayern. These were real interested. And I talked to people that work in transfer mark and different ones, and they were real. They are real interest. Chelsea might not get him, right? Yeah. Might not get him. Uh, and also the Polish national team had real interest in him they actually put his name in the roster you can go on their twitter feed 
the roster for this international break had Gabriel Sonina. So you have different coaches, federations, and clubs that are in a high level looking for this kid. So regardless of what I think of mm. his current ability right now, potential-wise, these guys are seeing something. So yeah. I think Chelsea's in a fight with big dogs. And, and in terms of risk-reward, I, I think Chelsea's up for a good one if it's risk-reward. I don't know also. I do know this interest was before you the had sanctions. an American Yeah, before. Because they reported it. So I think even Fabrizio Romano kind of reported it, or some reliable reporters here. I don't know how much American ownership plays a role too. There mm. could be some pressure. I'm not saying he's being signed for marketing purposes, but you could you could probably see an American owner wanting, it's like, hey, th- which is our highest rated prospect? It's like this guy right here. Mm-hmm. I want him. Yeah. Um, so Just- it's like, does he match the quality test? Yes, he does. So I rather have him rather than uh German goalkeeper. Yeah. I can see that happening, right? We'll see. You see Real Madrid doing the same too with uh, Lunin, right? Lunin or Lumen, the Ukrainian goalkeeper. Yeah. At Real yeah. Madrid time. He was starting for Ukraine at one point and he was what, 19, 20, signed for Real Madrid, doesn't play. They have an elite goalkeeper ahead of him, but they're holding patiently to him and probably will pay dividends. Yeah. I think as long as Chelsea pays a low fee, which 10 million is and has patience till Gabriel Sonin is 24, 25. It might pay dividends later on, but right now his current ability, no, nah, he's not going to be useful for Chelsea this year or next year or probably not two, three years from now. It's really, really long term if he ever plays for Chelsea. Yeah, and let's let's talk about um, finally the agent as well situation, which we mm-hmm. spoke about a little bit off off um, off camera. When it comes to his agent and who's close with him, because that's always these days what's going to play a part in terms of decision making, moves to make. Do they? Does it feel like they have a plan for him in terms of? Okay, we can see that you're a talented young goalkeeper. We know that you're obviously would be a starter for the under twenties um, US men's national team. We also know that you've got a lot of developing to do. But then, marketing wise, like you just mentioned, we do have a route. We do have a plan. We do have a little roadmap that we want you to follow. Or is there a danger of this becoming a thing where this is a cash cow for the agent? We want to get money out of the player, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera? Yeah. I, I don't know about in terms of knowing, uh, in terms of soccer, if it's the right path, if the agent sees that. But his agent's definitely very smart when it comes to business, mm. right? He has the same agent as Ricardo Pepe, which probably your your viewers don't know who Ricardo Pepe is, or some do. Mm. Ricardo Pepe was a, an emerging Mexican American, also dual national, just like yeah. Gaga Sonina, that was in between committing to the United States or Mexico. And then he committed to the United States during World Cup qualifying. He was 18. He scored 13 goals in MLS last season. So he's a very high, highly rated prospect. And when he did that and committed, all of a sudden started to pop up interest from Bayern Munich. I think even Chelsea showed up as interested at one point. A bunch of big clubs started to show up as interested on Ricardo Pepe. And he was compared to big names like Lewandowski. Somewhat <laughs> like how Gabriel Sonina has been compared to Neuer. We've seen that. I don't agree with that. I yeah. really don't agree with that. But he was. Uh, so I saw a lot of similarities, patterns of these two transfers, right? And is it the agent? Is it his camp? Is it just a coincidence? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, and then in regards to that, Ricardo Pepe ended up going to Augsburg, which is not a very charming club, but they paid $20 million for an MLS center forward, which for anyone that watched the Premier League, sure, an 18-year-old scoring 13 goals in the Premier League, you're going to pay a lot of money for that kid. Yeah. That doesn't happen so often in MLS, right? I believe our highest fee was Alfonso Davies. Yeah, and he was around that, but that's Alfonso Davies. Yeah, exactly. Right? So this how great be... he's become. Yeah, yeah. So again, um, Ricardo Pepe went, and I still think he'll be just fine. In Bundesliga, he struggled right now. I think he'll be fine over time. But the the transfer seems somewhat similar, and it's what I said. It seems like his agency or his camp likes to strike when the iron is hot. And right now, Gaga Sonino was, Poland was all over him, United States, and he was in the U20s, and and, and, and he was starting in MLS. So right now, he did get starts last season too. Now is the time to sell, sell, sell. And it could be that it's a time of overhype. It, it could yeah. be that this is what the kid is. He's, his potential is high. But I saw some similarities in those two. And then it came to my mind that they had the same agent. And it's like, okay, it kind of looks similar. Yeah. That, that's what I'm trying to say. And also, I know we're saying $10 million is not a big fee for yeah. Chelsea. But it's a 
pretty big fee for an MLS player uh, because yeah, MLS is, is not is not it's been growing and improving for sure. If you go back ten years, MLS was a joke. Now it's mm. a league that has been selling players like Brendan Aronson that just went to Leeds United was in MLS two three years ago and was mm -hmm. pretty good. So it's not a proven market. So yes, ten million for an MLS player is a lot because it's not proven. Yeah. The translation over, over yeah. here, yeah, to European. Yeah, like, is, like we, have, we haven't got enough like clear success rates to be like, yeah, we're gonna. Yeah. Pay. this is exactly what the value is of this player to come over here. Yeah, you'll be more stuff. willing to go pay twenty million on a Brazilian player that's had yeah. a track record of success. Like yeah. Real Madrid paid what forty, fifty million for Vinicius before he had a professional game. Yeah. That's not going to happen in MLS yet because it's not proven. Over time, yeah. it, the fees have been increasing in MLS because of Alfonso Davies, Brandon Aronson. You start to get some players, Weston McKinney, and, and even though he didn't play in MLS, but he came from an MLS academy. Yeah. People start to say, okay, they're capable of making players, but mm. it's still not a proven market. There's yes. a lot of bust. So that's the main issue. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how he gets along. I mean, I, I like your roadmap in terms of staying in America and doing a couple more years. I, mm -hmm. I have a little bit of a concern, like you said, with whether Chicago Fire will continue to start him because it, it sounds like right now he doesn't have the... Does he not have a lot of competition at Chicago Fire currently for his place? Or or maybe like oh, you are saying, they were just playing him to get that price up and really keep I him in think the window. I would have to double check because I'm not a Fire fan, so I don't follow mm -hmm. their backup. But I think they're, I think his backup is, is Chris Brady. Mm -hmm. And Chris Brady is the starting U20 goalkeeper right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's two young goalkeepers battling it out really for a place. As yeah, well. yeah. Brady, Brady, like right now we have a U20 Olympic qualifying mm. and Brady was called in and he's probably going to be our starter. So I don't know if they have a more, I, I, my main concern, I, I think right now, yeah, he would start for the fire. My only but question if they were to bring someone in. Then, yeah, that's yeah. my question. It's like, oh, we sold him now. Now so, let's go find someone more experienced with thir yeah. a thirty-year-old goalkeeper that will be more consistent. I don't. I feel like Chelsea's not Chelsea's smart enough that if they loan him back, it's like, look, we want guarantees here. Yeah, because Chelsea, there needs to be an incentive for Chicago Fire to now play someone that they've already sold as well. Exactly. So, Chelsea wouldn't be stupid about that. So if they loan him back, they're going to continue to probably play him. There's probably going to be clauses of things like, come on, he needs a minimum of this amount of minutes. Otherwise. Bring him into your U twenty threes. Just let him yeah. play there. Um, yeah, hundred percent. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up. I've liked this. This has been good. I think now, Chelsea fans, at least you've got you know uh, you've got a good foundation of knowledge on this guy, and you know you know what he's about in terms of what to expect, not to get obviously too overexcited. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens over the coming years because this is officially going to be off. You know, Fabrizio says it's basically very close to now. Here we go with this with this player. They rejected Real Madrid's offer. We've seemed to a bit slightly more. Um, this will be officially our first signing under the new Todd Bowie um, tenure. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward. And hopefully, like I said, with Petr Cech, I got a little bit more confidence when we, when we go for goalkeepers now that there's a little bit of thought going into it a little bit more than necessarily just panicking. And it's just, this is a move that Chelsea didn't have to make. So that also gives me a little bit of inkling that, OK, maybe they have really done their due diligence and, and they really do see something in this guy because there's no reason to really sign him for absolutely yeah, exactly. you know, for, for, for nothing else. Um, all right. Well, let, let them know where to find you, Filippo. It's been an absolute pleasure, bro. Plug away. Let them know. Um, the link will be in the description and obviously in the title as always, people. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Filippo. Yeah. You can find me on Tactical Manager TV on YouTube. Twitter, probably stay away from me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Too much trouble on Twitter. But no, on YouTube, this is me. So on YouTube, you guys can find on Tactical Manager TV. And thank you again for having me here. Looking forward to seeing more Americans in Chelsea. I know I know. sometimes we give you guys a hard time. <laughs> um, you the, the Twitter Awards is just quality. Honestly. Yeah, we give you guys a hard time. But just understand, you guys defend your own. We defend our own. But at the end of the day, when when Pulisic playing for Chelsea, maybe Gabriel Sonina in a few years or who else comes along, mm -hmm. we are cheering for Chelsea to succeed. We're, the United States was cheering for Chelsea in the Champions League final. Mm. But don't worry, we're going to give you guys a lot of a, we're going to give you a pretty hard time this season again. Don't worry. <laughs> guys, make sure you subscribe. Um, obviously, like I said, the link will be in the title link in the description. Smash up the icons and um, look out for the next piece of content. I'll see you guys in a bit. Big up your damn selves in a bit, people. Peace. Perfect. Perfect.